Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in um, for our Sunday morning service. I know it's a little bit unconventional, but um, hopefully you guys are enjoying and still in touch um, with everyone else at church and fellowshipping in different ways and more creative ways. Um, so special thanks to our team who came together to do worship this Sunday. Um, Byron, Sarah, Leo, as well as Jackie, who's filming. Um, don't worry, we're still maintaining social distancing though. Um, yeah.
as we worship you, regardless of where we are, regardless of what day it is, Lord God. Um, even if it's a little unconventional, God, I pray that you would just be with us, Lord, that you'd be walking before us, Lord God, and that you would just continue to protect us, um, have your hand of healing upon all of us, Lord God, those who are sick and those who are feeling alone, Lord God, those that are missing this fellowship, Lord, I pray that you would just fill them up, Lord God, and I pray that you just bless Pastor Chad as she comes to speak, and um, yeah, just bless, bless us through this week, in Jesus' name. Good morning. Thanks for joining us again today here at uh, CCPC Online. Our uh, services, which are like every other church, are being done online right now. Um, and we just want to uh, thank you uh, for joining us, for, for choosing to, to be a part of our church uh, during this time. A couple of announcements before we get started. Um, so we're looking for people to lead worship and to... Uh, to have that kind of ministry going as we're doing this. It's a very important part of our of our service, and we just want to make sure that we're, we're using the gifts and talents that God has given us. So if you would like to uh, do a, a worship where you're, you're able to video at home, um, please let me know. Uh, send me a message, uh, whether it's through Facebook or, or text me or call me or email me even, and uh, we will get a schedule together and put you on that. Um, so thankful for the few people that have already talked to me, so i um, super excited about just developing this, um, this opportunity that we have to, to grow in our gifts and talents. It's so good. Uh, we also want you to uh, send videos and pictures to David Yang, um, who is uh, editing our, our um, videos and putting together things. If you can send him pictures of uh, or videos of what you're doing at home, what is happening, uh, maybe uh, even send a funny little story for him to put up. It's just a way for us to keep connecting, to, to enjoy just being together and uh, just loving loving uh, each other in, in during this time. Um, we also just want you to continue to check our Facebook and our web page for uh, just updates on our cancellations um, or uh, things that are happening. Um, I'm putting a weekly challenge up on our Facebook page, but we can move it to our uh, web page as well. Um, and uh, thank you, Juanita, for, uh, for joining in this week. Uh, we did it for the kids, but I figured let's just open it up to the church. It'll be a lot of fun. And this way... Um Thank you. <laughs> Surprise interview. How long have you been coming to CCPC? <laughs> I don't know. Since 2007? And how did you start coming here? Yak. Ooh. Or no VBS, VBS for sure. Yeah, VBS. Yeah. What ministries are you currently in or have you ever been involved in? KFC and Sunday School. Wow. Boop, boop. What do you love the most about CCPC? We are like a huge family. Everyone has their own little quirks that get added to the little... We're like a big cake where we, everyone has their own little flavors that add to this cake. So we're like a, a family. Aww. What do you love the most about God right now? Shh. You want to be in on the interview too, Lilo? Yeah. <laughs> um, he is just still there. There's still little reminders that he's in, in working in the mist. So, yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Um, and uh, thank you, Juanita, for uh, for joining in this week. Uh, we did it for the kids, but I figured let's just open it up to the church. It'll be a lot of fun. And this way um, we stay connected and I get to uh, connect with people and, and talk with people that um, I may not get an opportunity to. So, so thankful. Um, to Sam and, and David as well. They continue to help me. Uh, Sam uh, helps me with the lighting and the computer and I do have a mic so if I'm not projecting enough this week I know you many of you have said it's hard to hear me um, I, I listen to the to what you're saying and we're trying to adjust every week that we're doing this so uh, hopefully this week is better uh, it's crazy how much you have to project and uh, so I can see how it's hard to hear me sometimes um, 
So yeah, we're going to get started. We're going to pray, and then we're going to continue in our lessons in the wilderness. Uh, this is our last one, uh, and, and we're going to move on to Joshua next week. So uh, let's pray. So Father, we just thank you that we can gather, Lord, that we can come, and uh, many of us in our pajamas, but just a time where we are worshiping collectively, uh, that you are in control, oh God. And we just thank you for that. We just pray for those that are that are struggling right now, Lord, that you would just encourage them and lift them up, that you would just uh, move the mountains that they need to be moved, oh God, that you would send your joy uh, amongst them, oh Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. So just wanted to say a quick hello to um, to all of you out there and, and uh, just wanted to say, hey mom, uh, Hopefully everything is what you'd like. Uh, we'll talk later, I'm sure. Uh, and just uh, thanks for joining us, Mama. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of uh, family participation during this session, okay? So I'm going to give you um, five minutes, and David will do something funny there, I'm sure. Um, and we are going to, um, I'm going to give you five minutes to look up three scriptures, and then you're going to discuss what they have in common. So uh, the scriptures are as follows. Psalm 36, 5, 6. So that's Psalm 36, verses 5 to 6. Uh, 1 Samuel 26, verses 22 to 24. And Proverbs 16, verses 5 to 7. Okay, so one more time. Those uh, are Psalm 36, 5 to 6. 1 Samuel 26, 22 to 24, and Proverbs 16, 5 to 7. Okay, so we're going to give you five minutes to look it up. If you're with, a, with your family, you can each pick a scripture and read it, and then we're going to come back in five minutes, and hopefully you come to the answer that I would like you to come to. Otherwise, we're going to learn something new today. All right, five minutes.
Okay, we're back. And uh, my hope is that you all had the same answer, um, or the common answer, which is faithfulness. And so today we're going to learn about um, the wilderness uh, ex experiences, lessons in the wilderness, and the thing that we need to learn about when we walk in the wilderness is faithfulness. And as we talk about faithfulness, um, we're finishing our wilderness lessons. And as you guessed, uh, today's sermons is brought to you by the letter F. All right. So even in the wilderness, uh, we can track Moses uh, and his, his life. So even in the wilderness, uh, Moses continued to seek God. Uh, Moses, very early on in, in the journey into the wilderness, he was um, released uh, from, from being carried into the promised land. Uh, he sinned, uh, and his, his punishment was that he would never actually set foot in the promised land. Um, and yet, that didn't stop him from seeking God. Uh, Moses, um, we mentioned when we were talking uh, about Moses in the lesson on purity, um, Numbers 21 to 13, that Moses disinherits the promised land, and, um, and his brother uh, Aaron also as well. But Aaron actually dies very shortly after that. Um, and so instead of sulking, uh, Moses continues to seek God. Uh, you know, Moses was given a great uh, job to do. He was given a great leadership uh, position, and he failed in, in, in an aspect. Um, and God desires faithfulness. He desires obedience. And when we're disobedient, we need to understand that disobedience is disobedience because sin is sin. And so Moses um, disobeys God. Uh, in by striking the rock as opposed to speaking to it and then yelling at the Israelites. And so his punishment is he's not going to enter the promised land and neither is his brother. And so and then his brother dies shortly after that. But I think the reason why Moses didn't sulk, why he continued to seek God, was because he recognized that God was and is and is to come, that God is greater than um, than what we see and what we know. And as he continued to seek God, he was actually a man that met God. And um, and there was a transformation in him. Uh, and uh, we, we learned about that when we were talking about worship. And so... Um, he also recognized, too, that even though he had done wrong, that he was forgiven. Um, but we need to understand that even forgiveness does not cover the consequences. That often when we are disobedient, when God, um, we challenge God or we, we are just blatantly disobedient, we need to understand that there are consequences to that. And so um, he, Moses was a man that understood that. That forgiveness didn't mean that the consequences were taken away. The, the forgiveness was in spite of the consequences. And he didn't um, seek separate favor. Moses, you never read that Moses begs God to let him into the promised land. We just see that he accepted that. But that he doesn't sulk. That he continues to seek God. And he continues to do what God um, had given him. The job that God had given him to do. Which was to lead the Israelites. So um, Micah 6, 4 says, I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. Through every battle, every storm, Moses led. Throughout every battle and every storm. Miriam dies shortly after the Red Sea. Aaron passes away quickly into the beginning of the Promised Land. And there's Moses or sorry, the, the desert experience. And there's Moses, and Moses is leading, and, uh, and it's not fun. And yet, he leads. Uh, Moses could have said, you know what, I'm not getting into the promised land. Forget it, I ain't doing anything. But he continues to seek God. He continues to, to petition God on behalf of the people. Uh, he, he didn't stop. And so the, for the 40 years of, of exile, Moses led. And he led with God. 
Uh, never once did he, he, he do it despite God. He did it um, with God. Um, and he never faltered, and he never failed, and he, um, he never failed to seek God. He was faithful to obey, um, especially after he sinned. Uh, you never read again that, that Moses ever found his favor with God after that. In fact, Deuteronomy 34, 10, 12 says, Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Who did all these those signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his officials, and to this whole land? For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all of Israel. And God did not abandon Moses, as he will not abandon you. We sometimes think that when we fall out of favor or we're in the wilderness that we're abandoned. In fact, we, we can recognize what Jesus spoke on the cross where he where he says, my God, why have you forsaken me? And there have been times where I've walked in the desert where I've said the same thing, that I feel like I've been abandoned, that I feel like um, God has has somehow hung me out to dry uh, without being with me, and yet that's simply not true. You need to remember that we do have an enemy who, who speaks lies into our minds and our hearts, and his biggest lie would be that we're alone, that God has forgotten us or doesn't love us, and yet... That is not true, and we see throughout Scripture how untrue that is. And so um, just as Moses walked through the wilderness, you need to remember that God is, is walking with you like he walked with Moses. He hasn't left you. He hasn't forsaken you. And um, it'd be really easy to think that he has, but he hasn't. And we need to remember that God is with us. You know, one of the, the very first lesson that is uh, for this wilderness one was that God is with us, and, uh, and he is for us, and we need to remember that. Um, and even in this, even when, when it feels like we're wandering for 40 years, God is still with you. He still has a plan and a purpose, and he's going to do great things in your life. You, you just need to hold on, because he will not abandon you. Moses continued to mentor Joshua to take over. And one of the important things is that Moses recognized and understood that he was not going to leave the Israelites forever and a day. And he started to uh, to plan ahead. And so there was Moses and there was Joshua. And where Moses was, so was Joshua. Uh, Joshua is mentioned uh, in, in, in conjunc conjunction with, with Moses uh, over 25 times uh, in uh, the, the wilderness experience. Um, he was always near Moses, uh, learning, um, taking leadership roles, uh, doing what God had placed before him, and 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 gathering wisdom and and courage from Moses. Um, there was no animosity uh, between them. Uh, Moses did never resented Joshua because Joshua was going to take them into the promised land, and Joshua never resented Moses because he thought Moses was old. And so it's really um, important that we understand that concept that as we train people to take on positions that maybe we once held or or may even be greater than ones that we, we held, um, we need to remember that we're doing it with a purpose and a plan that God is giving uh, direction to the, to the young leaders through the older leaders. And the older leaders can't resent what the younger ones are going to do. And the younger ones can't resent the older ones for feeling like they're being held back. The reality is, remember, it's like it's like that that bow and arrow thing that the tension that is built is what and once it's released is is what makes you go further. And so um, sometimes when when uh, young leaders are 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 really excited to get going, they may feel a little bit of that tension. But but there wasn't any of that where we read in in, in Moses and, and Joshua. There seemed to be a very uh, mutual love and respect. And um, something definitely that we need to model as we uh, as we sometimes are in leadership positions, we go through deserts, but it's because it's a it's a timing of a new emergence. Uh, we become smaller, uh, future leaders become bigger, and we need to be okay with that. And uh, and we need to just uh, to do it. Uh, and so God honors uh, the faithfulness. Of Moses because God honors faithfulness and Moses honored God 
Deuteronomy 34, 9 says, Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. The Moses imparted his wisdom to Joshua and God empowered Joshua in the spirit. Um, Again, Moses didn't do anything without God, and, and we see that even in his leading, he does it with the Lord. And we need to be mindful of that as we, as we lead, as we're in the wilderness. Are we accomplishing what God has for us, even in this point? Um, are we leading to the best of our ability, and uh, are we doing the best that we can? So, um, I found that in wilderness times, as we, uh, we wrap this up, um, that in wilderness times, it can be really easy to become bitter. Um, it can become easy to become disillusioned uh, with, with life, with God, with, with things. Um, it's easy to disconnect. Uh, oh, I don't feel like talking to someone and can't go face to face, so I'll ignore my phone. I won't answer emails. I won't answer Facebook, Instagram, however you connect. Um, it's and yet um, God calls us to even in the wilderness. He calls us to a place of joy, and He calls us to a place of strength, and He calls us to a place of fellowship. Even this way, uh, I've had many meetings this week. Um, some through uh, texting, some through a Facebook Messenger, uh, some through Zoom um, and, and Skype and all that kind of craziness, and, uh, and yet still connecting, um, still, still uh, involved in people's lives and, um, and people involved in my life. Um, and God has not left us in the midst of this wilderness. He hasn't left us in the midst of the storms. We need to remember that, and uh, we need to to take captive the thoughts that would say that you are alone because you're not. Uh, physically you may feel that way, but you're not because there are people out there who love you, who are praying for you, who are uh, uh, seeking to encourage you. Um, and so as we uh, continue uh, in this time uh, for however long it is, this new norm, um, we will remain faithful because God is faithful. We will remain faithful because we are called to be faithful. But we are also remain faithful because, um, because that is the innate sense in us. As God is faithful and as we are created in his image, so should that be within us. And uh, um, so it's hard, let's be honest, uh, without the accountability of seeing people, it's, it's difficult. Um, I know who's been watching sermons because it tells me how many people but I mean, that uh, uh, that number always changes. And uh, to be fair, uh, I'm really surprised at how many people actually tune in. I, I wasn't expecting that. Um, and uh, so it's a very uh, interesting uh, situation that we find ourselves in um, as we continue this way. But the reminder is that God has not left us in the wilderness, in the desert, to wander alone but he is with us uh, and continues to guide us. I saw this really cute, uh, uh, well, very truthful, but uh, uh, comic this week, sorry. And it was the devil and God, and the devil said to, to God, I closed all the churches, uh, the, church, the church buildings um, all over the world, and God said, yeah, I opened a church in every home. And so by doing this, we can be the church in our homes and uh, continue to seek God and what he's doing. And so we come to the end of our sermon, and so we ask, well, my sermon, <laughs> uh, so what? Right? So what? And uh, my questions are simply these three things. Are you still seeking God? Have you become uh, lazy? In, in your relationship, or is it becoming stronger as you're, as you're uh, attempting to build and to be more? Um, are you still following your calling? Even though you are uh, separate, are you still doing what God has called you to do? Are you still being that encouraging voice? Are you still being that, that lover of people? Are you still 
being that leader that you're supposed to be? Are you still connecting in the ways that you need to connect? Are you still following your calling? Um, and uh, as you're doing that, are you seeking the spirit for strength and wisdom and joy? Are you looking to God to provide everything that you need for this time? Um, and so I would encourage you to do so. We're going to pray. And uh, after we pray, don't turn off uh, the sermon yet. Uh, there's a special guest coming right after. So uh, let's just pray. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful day. Thank you, God, for your many blessings and your many mercies that are new every morning. Thank you, God, that just one week ago we, we celebrated your resurrection. We celebrated the fact that you went to the cross on a Friday, but you rose on a Sunday, victorious over all things, God. And so we just ask, Lord, that this week we would be empowered by your spirit, that you would fill us with wisdom and with joy and with strength, that we would continue to persevere, to do what we are called to do, O oh God, to be the living church as you've made us. And we just ask, O oh Father, that you would continue to walk with us, that you would continue to guide and direct and to strengthen, O oh God, and that we in turn would be mindful of who you are and listening to your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So just want to remind you that you are loved and uh, and you're missed, so missed by me and, uh, and many others, I'm sure. And uh, I'll see you next week. Okay, everybody. We have our special little guest here. He's wearing his nice little t-shirt. And I'm gonna, we're gonna show you what we do during the week. Are you ready, baby? Okay, Google, play Hente de Zona. All right, here's Hente de Zona on Google Play Music. Are you ready, baby? what baby and I do during the week. We have a little dance party. You can't really see him, but he's shaking right now to do more. All right, let's clap. Yay! <laughs>